Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. We are in the eclipse energy <laughs> and the fall equinox. Um, we were talking this morning and sharing just about the energies, and I'm sure everybody's feeling it in their own way. Um, we even were talking to Pandaji, who is here that did the Yagya fire ceremonies in August. And this full moon lunar eclipse equinox is about going within and being in the inquiry and working through your own inner work. And it's also really connected to emotions, huge, as well as ancestral. So we all come into our family unit um, or our lineage based on our cultural um, background with ancestral patterns. And there's a lot of clearing happening, you know, whether you're Hispanic or Jewish or Irish or Italian, we've all had Viking, a Viking or African American. We've all had, or immigrants, we've all had those deep ancestral patterns. And so that's a lot of the clearing that's happening right now. And the, I would say the word of the day or the theme of the month is gentleness gentleness Pandaji got on the phone with us <laughs> it's like we need to talk and checking in with us because we really whipped up a lot of energy here of light and when you whip up a lot of energy of light there's a a counter energy that comes of dark it's just we're in duality and we were really getting I mean for me I was shredded completely shredded and he was intuitively feeling it he got on the phone with us and he was just saying to us calm down you know because we were like um because we've had a lot of things just coming at us and it's been really fascinating to observe so we say gentleness um lean in not only leaning into the divine leaning into each other leaning into the people you love but lean in within yourself you know so um so ease and grace, ease and grace. And I will say, um, for me, there's been a lot of self-inquiry when you have a, someone that you love very much that all, you know, almost gets removed from your life in a very sudden way, you really question what's important and what am I here for? And why am I doing all this, right? What's what's the purpose? And so for me, there's a, a, a sense of being very fragile, being very vulnerable. And I'm in a place where I just want to give it all up. And, uh, and I say not my life, I mean, I, but meaning all of this. Um, it takes a lot of energy to create community and hold a space and put on programs and show up. And there's nothing wrong. It's just sometimes spirit has to, you know, meet you halfway or keep the energy flowing and, and, I feel like Kevin Costner in the field of dreams. If you build it, they were coming. I'm like, where is everybody? So, and we just want to honor the few of you that do come and constantly show up. And that really means a lot and not to minimize anything. And I found it fascinating that Amanda Ellis did a YouTube, you know, about taking a pause. She was ill and she called it puttering and taking care of yourself and I was in a place where I was ready just to just say, you know, we're, we're complete, we're done. And I'm going to go within and do my own work. And, and we are going to do that for a period. Um, because it's a lot of energy to hold this. And um, I'm pretty spent. So, I mean, that's just, I apologize if that, hit you the wrong way or my my shadow <laughs> or my darkness um doesn't sit well but it's the truth 
Um, I just don't ever want to be anything but honest and transparent. Um, so, you know, we'll have a retreat this coming weekend. We have a really small group. It is what it is. We're so grateful for those that said yes. Um, we understand that spirits bringing who need to come. I mean, we put it out. A lot of people said yes and then said no. And so um, it's just what's so. And um, if we do a retreat in December, we'll probably make it online. Um, and I'm in a space where probably not holding any more in person programs here for a while um just so I can regenerate because we really do this all by ourselves and uh we've leveraged so much to keep it going for all of you and um, maybe it's not supposed to be that you know and it's totally okay and I'm really in a place of acceptance um yeah. So that's my, my vulnerability. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. Panaji told me I'd be a better after October 30. He said that eclipses are hitting you square on your chart. So I was like, oh, great. You know, so um, it'll be nice to see what comes back in a new way. Um, oh, but, but definitely just um, nothing's wrong. It's just what's, I guess, supposed to happen. So, yeah. Thank you. Ryan. You're welcome. I, my, my thoughts on all the energies right now. You know, you we can look at what is happening in our lives. We're all being tested. Tested might not be the right word. We could say stretched. We're all being stretched. What does stretched mean? Stretched means beyond our comfortability. Stretched beyond our ability to handle what we normally can handle. Opening up new pathways, new energetic ways, and we're just being stressed and at an energetic level, at a quantum level, at a light level. And then sometimes we look around us and we see what's around us and we see beautiful beings that we love so much who spent their whole life serving, going from, you know, ashram to ashram, healing and serving, and then, you know, car wreck and and they're in a hospital and they may, you know, may not survive. And you're like, what, 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 what? That's not supposed to happen to good to this person who's dedicated her life to her life. To serving the planet, not just and most of you have been served by her at some point, you know. So, you know, you look at these things and where is the fairness or where is the truth behind all of this, right? And what are we to get from it? I know that there's a couple different ways I can go here, but stay with the with the energy. We're all we're all going to be tested. Again, I don't like the word tested, stretched. When you do this stretching energy, you're moving. What are you moving? You're moving energy. You're moving life force. You're moving, you're creating a charge electricity, but we're doing it at the energetic level. We're doing it at the emotional level. We're doing it at the mental level beyond our normal capacity. This charge is what we're looking for. This is what we're generating. If you don't generate it yourself, it's gonna generate through the planet, going through the cosmos and the solar players and the equinoxes and the lunar eclipses, and you're going to be at the effect of them. And what is the opportunity? Because charge is going to happen. Charge is happening. What does charge do for you? Right? Why do we want quantum charge? Why do we want 
starfire charge. Charge is what you feel when your chakras open up. It's the vibration of the chakras. They begin to spin. They create cones. What are those cones? Those cones are electromagnetic fields. What is that? Those electromagnetic fields. That's consciousness coming online. So your consciousness is coming online when you have charge. Healing happens. Flow happens. Connection happens. Your heart opens up, right? And then you can hold more and more charge. So charge is what we're all looking for. And that's the opportunity to step from the physical world, to fix what we think is important and to step into the metaphysical world, what we know is important. What do we know is important? That means reprioritizing. You got to reprioritize what's important to you. How do you know what's important to you? Right? You got to just go inside and look. You got to feel. You got to experience. The inner voice has to come up. Denise looked at me today and she said, You're going on with the go D? Go T today? And I'm like, What do you mean go T? That's a full beard. <laughs> I'm like, What do you mean? And did I have the intention of having this full beard or no, but something is happening energetically within me that's bringing up the sadhu vibration. The sadhu is the brahmachari. It's a Hindu. You see, you see Sai Baba behind us. This is a sadhu. <laughs> <Right>? Avatar. <laughs> and there's this cultivation for me. I'm, I'm looking at my priorities. What, what, what do they need to be restructured as? Meditation, morning and evening. Exercise. Service. Those are the three things that structure your life on your spiritual path. Those are the three things you need to have in the priority. And do I do my meditation morning and evening? Every morning, yes. <laughs> Every morning, I do it. Sometimes I fall asleep in the night doing it. Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I go, through, I did a great job today, you know. And we're looking at all of these things. And I, I guess I guess I get tired of telling Denise this story. <laughs> but, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, in Krishna, Krishna is Arjuna, his best disciples, talking to Krishna, Krishna, the Lord, God, the Christ energy, the, the consciousness that we're all here to attain, right? He's asking Arjuna, Arjuna's dis disappointed, disappointed that there's not more people around him on the battlefield <laughs> fighting all these demons. <laughs> and Arjuna says, you know, one in 1,000, seek me. That means, you know, there's a thousand people that are looking for God, right? But of the thousand seekers, only one finds me. That means of the seekers that are looking for God, only one in 1,000 find him. So that's, that, that means you're on a difficult path is what I'm trying to say. You're one in a million. <laughs> and this game that we're asking is, is this transition from the physical to the metaphysical is where are your where are your priorities what are you putting first in your life and so we're being asked to create a new world a new earth a new structure are we going to do it consciously are we going to do it by giving and 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 what are we contributing to humanity what's the contribution that you're giving when you look at the, you know, my, I, I, I keep getting my tombstone. Am I going to look at my tombstone? Am I gonna, what did I give? <laughs> I'm not going to look back and say, what did I, you know, what did I do? Did I survive my life? Yeah. I'm going to look at what, what did I can contribute? And, and so contribution is a necessary quality for community. And that's why we come together. Because not all of us have... The discipline, right? We're 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 mining discipline. It's really hard. Not yeah. all of us have the quantum charge, but together we can they're in series. They work together so that we create the glimmer of our higher consciousness, our collective unity, the, our collective soul, our Archangel Michael collective, our Magdalena collective, the 
whatever we want to call these divine princess or the, the, the twelve strand or DNA, right? The, the, so that's why we come together on these calls is to presence that energy to move the freak to, to 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 move the energy so that we're creating the charge, so that we open up the chakras and we can create a correct co collective that. Our higher selves can pour the blessings through <laughs> into this, what we call the morphogenetic field or the blueprints for a fifth dimensional earth. So I hope I didn't go on too much of a tangent that's just no. kind of came out, but yourself. what next, right? <laughs> or be it, take this opportunity of this full moon lunar eclipse and the equinox and really ask yourself, what am I contributing? What's my legacy? Why am I here? How can I serve? And be honest with yourself, be honest, because all the distractions and all the shoulds and all the to-dos of the third dimensional reality are gonna get louder, are gonna get more stressful, and are going to get bigger and more challenging. And you can get pulled out in the third dimensional chaos. I mean, Michael watched me, our husky got poisoning. We were in the ER with her twice this week. I was so pulled out and in my drama that I was yelling at the vet. You know what I mean? It's not my normal. And I, because I was so with, Everything happening with my friend. I mean, I, I got pulled into the drama. And so when I calmed down and, and he held it for me, you know, so I didn't completely disintegrate and could sit with it. But I'm telling you, I have been sitting every morning hours and just crying to move the energy. And it's not wrong. It's just what needs to occur. The dog made it through. She's on the other side. But if I would have stayed charged in the drama instead of centering, you know, it, it just grows. So it's fascinating to me that every one of our pets took a hit after the Yagya. And I told Pandiji, and he said, someone's got to take the hit. Something's got to take the hit. He and, had a car accident. And he had a car accident. And, was, and something car, happened with his <laughs> wife. And, you know, it was like. His temple. And and sometimes our animals or our children or our loved ones or our car or our home or our prop, you know, take the hit for us. And so what was so gracious is he gave us, we did it yesterday, something to do to protect the property of the energy and ourselves and everything here. But this is real energy. And so really go within and be in that inquiry and see, use it as an opportunity to realign into that purity. And I'm, I know I'll, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll get there. <laughs> Just don't know when. And, and thank God, you know, I'll be with some beautiful souls next, this coming week that I love you and you're always with me and, you know, we have each other to lean on. So, you know, that's why community is so important. Um, so, so use the opportunity. I guess why we're sharing this is you're going to be taken to the mat. Yeah. If you haven't already been taken to the mat. So hang in there. You're going to want to quit. And how many times <laughs> did I quit this week? <laughs> wanting to quit. <laughs> means you're developing starfire <laughs> and when you're developing starfire you have the energy to turn on your merkaba remember that i don't know That's if anybody's really seen a merkaba. man get your merkaba going your starfire your quantum charge the energy that's in your heart field is necessary to turn your light body vehicle on <laughs> And when this thing gets spinning, it's self-perpetuating. Right now, we kind of have to 
think about it and turn it on. Sometimes it's easy just to say it, but, but there'll be a point where it's, it lights up and your consciousness, it's like turning on a whole new vehicle of perception and experience of the divine. So let's go in today and let's do, let's see what the, this is the image of the Merkaba. If you don't know what a Merkaba is, or if you haven't done work with a Merkaba, your higher self has. It's part of your, everyone has a Merkaba. It's a, it holds um, morphogenetic field patterns for all your 12 strand DNA and beyond. And uh, this is what we as a collective, we individually have one, but as a collective, we are creating a Merkaba on these these. Our Earth has a Merkaba. Our yeah, galaxy. Earth has, has everything has a Merkaba. This, everything has a Merkaba, a blueprint that's held within uh, a force field, electromagnetic force field for experience. So we're turning that on with these meditations, whether we know of it or not. And then they allow us to, at a soul level and a quantum level, to be able to move and transmit and broadcast multi-dimensionality into this realm and back to <laughs> beyond time the other to other aspects of ourselves so without getting too much into all that we'll just kind of say Merkaba travel is something that we may be doing today I don't know I kind of got the feeling that we need to talk about it so I'm gonna just presence it there if we do we do great perfect all right let's get ready to we did a lot of preamble there and yeah blah 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 but thanks for listening thanks. Hope it wasn't too much of our <sighs> Take a deep breath. Yeah, that would be good. Just kind of bring your hand into your heart field. When you bring your hands, your left and right hands, you're bringing your positive and negative charge to your heart space. And when you bring it in front of your heart, there's 108 nadis or little batteries, we could call them, that are surround your heart. So when you do this namaste, you're doing so many things. One is you're opening your heart, but you're charging your heart. If you were just to stay here for two minutes every morning and every day, you would align with your heart energy, the heart consciousness at an energetic and beyond level. But it also harmonizes your brain, left and right hemispheres, and brings that wisdom ray in harmony with your heart ray, your knowing ray. So they become love, light, light, love. And we move into that bliss charged love, which we call starfire or quantum charge. So take a deep breath into your heart. Now. You can relax your hands, put them at your feet or at your, at your hips. Feel that your feet are connected to the ground and then exhale. Breathing in, rolling your shoulders back, opening up your lungs, open up your chest, and then laying your energy back down into your spine behind and just kind of dropping into your spine now with your heart open and exhale. Into your heart. Hold. And as you hold with your heart, see if you can also feel how your heart is also charging your spine, presence your spine, just presence it from crown to root. And then exhale. One more time, breathing into your heart. Now take it as deep into your heart as you can. We call that secret space within your heart. That source point, go all the way in, all the way in. Just feel it, feel it anchoring, feel it opening, feel source recognizing you and connecting to source. And now breathe from inside, breathe from the inside of your heart, breathe from source, breathing in. Hold, fill up your heart and presence your spine. And then exhale into your auric field. You're doing radial breathing now. So it's like your heart is radiating this prana from your heart center, breathing into from the heart center. Exhale. 
you're holding in your heart and you're noticing your spine from crown to root charging. And exhale. One more time from core of your own heart, breathing in. Feel that self-illumination as you just witness and feel the energy as it swirls and moves in your heart field. De-densification happening. And then exhale. And presence now both, but you're going to move down your spine. From the back of your heart as you're breathing now, your breathing returns to normal. Feel the energy kind of connecting at your spine from your heart. Good. You may start to breathe through your spine now. What does breathing through your spine feel like? You now you can breathe from the crown chakra that's opening upwards and feel the solar currents, the solar galactic currents coming in into your spine. You can also open from your root and feel the energy coming in from Mother Earth. That nourishing energy. And then you can kind of hold them both together. So as you breathe into your heart, see if you can pull the energy down from your crown and up from your root, from Mother Earth, into your heart. So gently exhale, and then breathing in through your spine. Pulling it into your heart, holding both energies, let them merge. The galactic currents, the terrestrial currents, let them merge in your heart, merging with the source. So you have the trinity of the source field of your own heart and then exhaling out into your orc field. Again, breathing in from the crown and the root. Pulling into the heart, feeling the connection to your source point. And then exhaling out into your work field. One more time from root and from crown, breathing in. Holding in your heart, feeling that locking in the source point within your heart, and then exhaling. I'm focusing totally on your spine as one divine, illuminated diamond light rod staff. What a staff. Just let the currents mix in your spine. You can actually begin to breathe from your spine. It's almost as if your spine is semi-permeable and you're breathing life force. It's as if your spine can pulse like your own heart does. Breathing it in from the cylinder of your spine, what we call your shushuna, at the energetic level, antakrana at the mental, high mental level. And just feel the energy moving in from above and below, from your heart, and then also feel it coming in. It's almost like you're pulling the energy from your auric field into your spine through the permeability of the cylinder of your spine. So pull it in. Kind of contract the spine a little bit. Just feel the energy contracting here, contracting, contracting, and then exhale it out. 
out into your physical world, out into your subtle bodies. One more time, breathing into the spine. Contracting your work bodies. Holding, tensing at your spine. Feel the whole spine fully tensed. And then exhale. And just relax and allow your breath to return to normal. And begin now just to scan your energetic field. First, start with your subtle bodies. Is your root open? Is your crown open? Do you feel like your auric field is energetically vibrant? Do you feel that it's illuminated? Or do you feel like there maybe it's a place where there's could use a little more expansion or you could not quite fully circular or like a cocoon, like an egg around you. And if you feel like that way, then what you do is you just breathe into your spine. Contract again with the vision of your whole auric field, bright and illuminated. And then you just kind of exhale it and you just Push the energy through whatever density is there. That's it. And what you'll notice as you do that, your auric field gets stronger. You may feel it like almost like a, a shell, but it's not a hard shell, it's a plasmic force field shell that protects you. It's like your own biome. See if you can notice that energetic field. Again, if you want to, you can go ahead one more time, breathe into your spine contract and expand it out. And every time you expand your auric field, even just a little bit, it causes a quantum expansion and awareness and consciousness and the movement of it energy. So don't worry if you don't feel like your auric field is moving too much. It's going exactly where it needs to be for you. Good. Now, from your auric field, you may be able to sense as if your auric field itself was one sensing instrument. You may be able to sense. more auric fields. You may be able to feel other people or other beings, other Merkabas. And we're just gonna allow through your breathing, stay focused in your spine and in your heart, grounded but allow your auric field, this layer, your consciousness of your auric field to just sense these other auric fields around you. You may just sense it as light. Maybe you sense it as vibration. You may even start to sense that the illumination of these other auric vehicles around you. There may be other parts of people on this call that are on this meditation, past, present, future. Maybe aspects of your higher self, your monadic tribes. 
we don't want to be too active in the mind trying to figure out what we really want to do is just sense what you are receiving. There's like a communication happening. You could say that the Merkabas are conscious living aspects of higher self. And that consciousness is communicating. And you're receiving. We, sometimes we call them light codes. Sometimes we call them upgrades. So frequencies becoming more illuminated. You feel you're starting to spin more or open more. And what they're communicating for us to know right now is that there is held within your spine is all of your bodily structures, all your divine templates. Everything that you are, chakra-wise, auric-wise, all the perceptive units of your multidimensionality is within your spine. So as you move energy through your spine, that's what is activating the blueprints, which is causing Kundalini to move, causing chakras to spin, causing intuition to come online. And there's like a certain level of the these light codes are charging up your awareness of your spine, your inner world. And the reason why we speak about Merkabas is because when your Merkaba is online, and it's online when your spine is activated, the charge is there, whether you're aware of it or not, you're in your sovereignty, meaning you're not taking on energies from other people or other beings. And yet you are connected to your organic 12th dimensional grid consciousness So you may just feel some energy of prana moving through your body right now. There's some plasmic energy moving through, which is de-densifying. It's like changing the stagnant energies into light and releasing old charges that are held in the body, held in the physical vehicle, held in the organs, held in the bones. And as we talked a little bit early, held in the DNA blueprints of our ancestors. So you may feel some really deep energy moving into your bones into the marrow of your bones. You may feel your nervous system becoming a little more excited. What we're looking for is this flow through the bones. Maybe you pick the spine as one vehicle. Maybe you pick another bone the hips or your leg or your arm. See if you can feel like you can direct some of this plasma through your bones. Be a conscious co-creator.
You can just breathe into your spine and then exhale the spine. It's like pushing the energy through your spine, through your bones, like you're pushing toothpaste or air through a straw. And if you picked one on the right side or the left side, then go to alternate and pick another bone now from the other side. Breathe into your spine, fill it with plasma, and then exhale and push it through that bone. Wash that bone with your own pranic life force. If you feel like there's some healing that physical, emotional in your body, in your work field, go ahead and continue to do this work. But we've activated on each side of the skeletal system, we've activated that in the brain as well. So there's a plasma reorientation happening in the brain. And you feel your brain is totally illuminated. And you feel your third eye beginning to spin forward, your crown spinning upwards. And the pineal or the cave of Brahma within the middle of your brain, you feel that illuminated. And it begins to spin, actually. You may feel like a a, a, a helix, a helical energy. Call this the eternal flame. You may feel that helical energy that's kind of moving up through the center of the brain, communicating to the crown chakra and its thousand petal lotus. And it continues through that vortex, that transcendent vortex of our crown chakra, and it begins to illuminate the space between our crown and our soul star chakra. See if you can kind of presence or at least visualize or feel like a slight fog or a slight illumination. Feel that I want to call it infinity helix vortex from your crown to your soul star, which is about three quarters of a foot above your head. Excellent. It's almost like that. As you pay attention to it, it begins to illuminate and spin a little bit more. It's spinning at a very high rate. What I want you to do is just to energetically, with your awareness, as if you're taking a feather, place it into the soul star chakra, three quarters above your head. It's almost as if this magnetic field of this eternal flame that's spinning creates a gravitational field, and you can just put that feather right there into your soul star chakra, and it'll be held. You don't have to hold it yourself if, unless you want to. In the past, we just kind of placed the feather there, but now we're actually feeling the feather gravitationally be in weightlessness. And as you do that, you may feel the energy from Mother Earth is coming up to support through your root, through your sacral, through your solar plexus, heart, throat, the whole infinite helix Flame is extending all the way down into the core of Mother Earth. And you are like a electromagnetic 
conduit or field that's sovereign in its strength around this eternal flame spinning. And you're holding it. The stronger your container or your auric field around it, the more you breathe into your spine and strengthen your subtle bodies in your auric field, the more energy you pull up through this channel of this infinite helix energy. You can move, kind of feel it moving out of your spine through your shishuna, through your light body. As it continues to open up the channel and move into the crown. So for the opportunity, or I could say even the challenge for us right now, is to continue to hold that feather in our awareness. Mm -hmm. no matter what is going on in the body uh, electrically or whatever light is happening in your chakras develop your will power to keep your focus on your soul star chakra and one could call this feather a represent representation of the dove energy. Peace. Notice how peace now is vibrating from your crown above your crown, soul star, and washing down through the infinite core. And moving through out into all of the different subtle bodies. You may be getting images by holding on to the focus of the feather and the dove. For me, I felt the Christ in energies. I felt the presence of Maha Chohan. Great Ascended Master. Notice also that with deep within your heart field, within that secret space that we call source point within you, there's also an infinite flame that's also resonating with the infinite flame held between the crown and soul star chakra. The spinning helix. Things are going to start to move a little faster for us now. Also, presencing the both of those, locking both of them in. Move your energy into your root aware of both the heart energy and the soul star energy merging and resonating. And then from your root chakra, from your antakarana, just push the energy down into Mother Earth. And then with your consciousness, slide with that energy down through the Mother Earth, 
pushing this plasma of your multidimensional source point down into the core of Mother Earth. Feel yourself landing in the core, reuniting with your core self, your energetic aspect that's there. And then see if you can presence or lock into the infinite helix there that's at the core of Mother Earth. She also at her core, at her source point. It's also resonating the same frequency of the infinite helix. Your immortal flame. And from that place at the core, see if you can just see or feel without leaving the core, without leaving the heart of Mother Earth, just feel yourself at the surface, still holding and anchoring the infinite helix in your home, in your grid, your land at the surface and at your soul star chakra. And that soul star chakra is connected to all of those other Merkabas that were our higher self aspects that had come to be here with us to connect us to what we call the planetary logos or the higher mental mind of Mother Earth. So if you want to take that soul star up to above Mother Earth outside of the ionosphere, magnetosphere, and just tie into that galactic consciousness of Mother Earth there. And allow that peace that feather, the energy of the dove, the Christ, the ascended masters, the archangels, Elohim to move through your crown, through your soul star, through this circumference surrounding Mother Earth, through her morphogenetic field. And then see if you can breathe from the source of Mother Earth through your soul star chakra around the circumference of the morphogenetic field of Mother Earth. So you're simultaneously anchoring and broadcasting while transmitting from the crown soul star, broadcasting from the core, cause and effect simultaneously happening. And just open yourself for one minute now, we're just gonna allow our soul collectives, whether they be Syrians, Arcturians, Pleiadians, Lyrans, no names, Hathors, all the Christed energies, the galactic and intergalactic lineages that we are associated with. And now I'm going to be just pour this through this opening into this container that we are holding from Mother Earth, this energy of the peace and of the Christ. And breathe it through Mother Earth. Take it through the ley lines, take it into the core, take it into the substructure, the the tectonic plates, through the biomes, the plant kingdom, the mineral kingdom, through the animal kingdom.
and through the human kingdom be a cause of reigning peace into the collective. One last breath into your heart, feeling the heart expansion and exhaling love, love, love and light, bliss, joy. And on the in-breath, just feel yourself totally expanded as much as you want to leave yourself open. Come back into your physical body, into your heartbeat, into your breathing, into your bones, into your homes. And just practice for a little bit, just being here and there as you integrate these energies and frequencies, they're going to continue to move through you for as long as you wish. Bring your hands in namaste. And slowly opening your eyes, fully present, fully connected to your soul. connected to the Christos Cristala grid. Om Namah Shivaya. Jai Shri Krishna. Namaste. Namaste.